Today is the 24th of April, 2022, and my name is Savannah Sabala. I am interviewing Ms. Laura Pena for the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. This is part of the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History Project in partnership with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Ms. Pena, that this recorded interview will be placed in the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M Kingsville and shared with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, especially given that your recording may appear online, I will honor your wishes. And all you have to do is say pass and we will move on to another question. Also, if there is something you wanna talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. Especially at the end, I'll ask you if there's a if there is anything you would like to say and you can put your opinion or voice out there on situations we didn't talk about. Because we are, con we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record your consenting. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each one. There are four questions we need to make sure you agree to before we go on. The South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University Kingsville wishes to archive your interview, along with any other photographs and other documentation at the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M University Kingsville. We will retain copyright of the interview and any other materials you donate to the South Texas Archives at Texas A&M Kingsville. Do you give us consent to archive your interview and your materials at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville? Yes. Do you grant South Texas Archives at the Jerrigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville copyright over the interview and any material you provide? Yes. Do you agree to allow South Texas Archives at the Jerrigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes. Okay. Do you grant South Texas Archives at the Jerrigan Library at Texas A&M University Kingsville consent to share your interview and your materials with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pande Pandemic Oral History Project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Yes. We have many questions in a pre-interview form that we have already filled out. We use that information from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure voices server at the University of Texas at Austin. The final storing of the preview inter form will be at the South Texas Archives at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. We will have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members so that will not be part of your public file. Your public file will only be accessible at the Jernigan Library. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at the South Texas Archives at the Jernigan Library at Texas A&M University, Kingsville? Yes. On occasion, voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone numbers or your email with journalists? Yes. Okay. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we will proceed to start our interview. So before we go on, I of course know you because you're my math teacher from high school, but of course my classmates and my professors do not know you. So if you would like to give a little brief introduction so everybody else can know who you are. Mm -hmm. I am the Algebra 2 pre-cal <clears throat> Pre-Cal, pre-AP, and AP calculus teacher in Skidmore. I have been there for eight years, um, but I, in teaching in total, it's been 10 years. And um, I have a passion for teaching and for helping others in mathematics. Do you, do you need me to add to that? No, that's perfectly enough. Again, it's nice to be able to speak to you again, especially since it's been so long since high school. Yes. Especially, especially since COVID did happen while I was in high school. So are you able to tell me a little bit about your experience with COVID-19, both personally? 
uh, sorry, uh, both personally and what? And along with uh, the teaching part of it? Yes, yes, I'm able to share. Can you give uh, a little bit of insight? Uh, yes. Um, I, I, th I think mostly the effect was at school more than it was personally. Personally, I don't have, like my life didn't change a whole lot just because of my point of view on sicknesses and diseases. It didn't change a whole lot, just um, in minor ways, but in teaching, it was a major change for me. Um, do you want me to go in detail? Yes, please. So we have to be very careful with the students and try to prevent the spreading of germs in any single way that we possibly can. One of the ways is that I still, even to this day, will spray each of the desks before my students enter. And then I'll go outside and greet them with giving them a napkin so they can wipe down their desk. Um, I have Dermex bottles in two different places in the classroom that the students are free to use for themselves. They feel like they need it. I have extra masks in case they want to use one. They are free to be using one. Uh, but at this point, it is optional when last year it was required that everyone wear a mask. Um, we did have to have the students walk a certain way on campus to prevent the spraying of germs. I like just to minimize it. They had a one path around the campus, um, which seemed inconvenient sometimes because they had a, they could have a class right beside another class, yet they had to go all the way around the building, enter it from the exit to go to the class that they were nearby. So, I mean, that was uh, different for the students and hard to get used to. Yes, ma'am. Uh, before, it's really hard to remember everything before COVID happened, but do you remember how you first heard about it? I know some people heard about it online through the media, some people heard it through news stations, others, it was more like Facebook posts. I actually heard it through my family. That's the way I heard it. Did someone, I, yeah, go ahead. Did someone like get it or did they know someone who got it or did they just hear about it? No, it's just hear about it. And I believe they heard about it from TV. Oh, okay. What was your first initial reaction when you first learned about COVID? Because I know we all had sort of different reactions in the sense of we heard it, it was somewhere else in the world, and it wasn't really here in America when everything first started. So was your initial reaction more of a shock or was it more concerning? Um, when I first heard about it in China, I, mean, I didn't think that it would come this way. So. Uh, to hear about it coming to the U.S., it was shocking. Um, however, it didn't. To me, it was like another type of flu, you know, and the way we handle flu is not with mask or Germex. I mean, I just saw it as another type, you know, another type of flu that we were going to have to be going through. Yes, ma'am. Was there a certain point where you suddenly realized like it was a serious, like a serious uh, disease? Because I know personally, uh, I did hear about the lockdowns happening in other parts of the world, but I was still sort of cautious about it until when we were in high school and, you know, they told us, well, your spring break is going to be prolonged. And then we just never went back. And that's when personally for me, I saw the seriousness of it. Was this before that happened or did you sort of find it serious more after? Yeah, that was a, that was the same point where I thought it was serious also was when we didn't go back to school. Uh, I would have to uh, yeah, agree on that. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Because personally for me, I didn't fully feel the effects of it until they were like, oh, you're not having prom this year. And I was like, oh, so this is how serious it went too. Yep. I remember I was at the prom, I was getting my prom dress that day. And while we were getting the dress, that's when the email came out. And that's when I was like, 
gosh. Yes, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's awful. <laughs> But besides the first beginning of COVID, is there any like daily impacts or like previous impacts like with your kids? Cause I know when there is a series where we had to be online, but you being a teacher as well, along with a parent, did that affect him as well? Um, I'm sorry, did they affect what as well? Your children? Oh, um, yes, definitely. My goodness, I couldn't challenge them like I would face to face seeing them. It was very hard because our time was narrowed down for one. And then they're behind their camera, which they can pause and you know leave, come back. And so uh, sometimes they weren't listening. Sometimes they wouldn't even check in. I mean, they had told us as long as they do their work, they're kind of present, so they didn't have to be online. So they were not learning as they normally would. And even as I was teaching, I couldn't challenge them as much as I would in person. So it was very sad, very sad. Yes, ma'am. And I know you have a son as well, correct? Yes. Did that affect his stability in learning? Yes. Was he, was he more like able to do it in person than online? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely in person though, online. Did this scare him in any way about how serious it was going on in the world or was it just more, uh, well, mom is saying and having to do this now, so it's kind of different. I wouldn't say that I scared him because I didn't feel scared because of my point of view of COVID and the same with his dad. We were kind of like on the same page and him seeing that, it didn't scare him. Uh, but he did learn to take precautions in situations, so. Yes, ma'am. What about other family members, those who both live in the U.S., and if you have families who live in other continents in the world, did that affect them, especially how differently everybody was doing it, like the U.S. was doing it differently than how the U.K. or Asia was doing it? Um, so do I have family you said another continents or another, um, what you, their cities? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you repeat the question one more time? Sorry. Yes, ma'am. So do you have family members over in uh, other borders? Other borders? Mm, I would say no, no. How about any in other states? Because I know some states did certain procedures differently. Um, I have my brother in, let's see. I want to say he was in Arizona at this time when this happened. So I have my brother in Arizona. And I believe, yeah, when this happened, he was there. Where I think that we started the shutdown before Arizona did. Texas started it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were kind of later in things, doing things than we were. So when y'all would talk, would y'all like differentiate between how the states were doing it? Like were their mask procedures different than our mask procedures or how they were around people? Uh, I don't know. I didn't ask him, so I don't know. Yes, ma'am. Do you live in a very populated neighborhood? I know where we live, sometimes there's like a couple feet where you can have a next door neighbor or in the back roads of Skidmore or down other counties, we have more space between the houses. Did your neighbors deal with it differently than how you did? Uh, so I live in Skidmore and there's a lot of space. I live in a house there's a lot of space around my house so really I just have like one set of neighbors and um I know that they were very cautious about the six feet apart and they will wear a mask uh, pretty often yes ma'am and they would they would keep from going out as much as possible I remember that 
I also know you go to church very often. You also bring a little bit of the church to the school. Uh, did you have to do that differently? Because I know personally in my family, like my grandmothers, they personally started doing church online. Our church offered where you were able to watch the sermon videoed. Did you still go in person just do precautions or were there other situations? Um, no, that was the same thing that happened to me. We started uh, going to video. So we would stay home and watch it on Facebook Live. And so the pastor would be there at the church still and has someone help record, but that was it. It was just them two. And we would just be watching online for, a f I don't know how many months, a few months. And when we went back, we, the pastor set some rules. So we were to spread out by family in the pews, use a Dermex, do not shake hands anymore, but you know, wave to each other. Uh, we did not go to the altar and pray like we normally did. We would stay in our pews and pray. Uh, we did not sing as groups anymore either. We used to sing uh, like the women would sing together and then the men would sing together and the children. Uh, but we stopped and things like that just to be safe and keep uh, our distance from each other. Yes, ma'am. Were there uh, certain acts during the church like where you have to give the bread and the wine? Was that different or did it just stop for a while and perceive in a different way when it comes to our church we actually do that once a year and try to remember because we do that in april so that was like right beginning oh um uh, I want to say we still did it, but we just had like that one person pass out and they, I think they had gloves on. I think I can remember that. They had gloves on and they passed it to us to like where we were at in church. Yes, ma'am. I know my church offered uh, school services too, where it was Wednesday church school or Sunday church school. Did y'all do that differently? Did y'all do because the church sermons were going online, did y'all do church classes going online as well? So for the children's Sunday school? Yes, ma'am. Mm, we actually stopped that. Uh, I was one of the Sunday school teachers and I only had a few. My son was one of them. And um, it was just hard to keep to get in touch with the I had little ones so it was just hard to keep in in touch with them or have them get on and so I wasn't pushed to do it for my pastor either so I didn't continue the online uh Sunday school we none of none of us did yes ma'am even though y'all didn't continue to do Sunday school did you still practice it with your son oh yeah Mm -hmm. Moving on from the religious aspect of it, has COVID impacted your ability to gather with family and friends for important events or holidays? Were there, uh, were there certain times where you didn't go out or you're very precautious with things you did with your family? Like I know there's Easter and Christmas or even birthdays. Um. So when it comes to me and my immediate family, we were pretty um, open to meeting still on the holidays that we celebrate. However, my aunt that usually joins, she hasn't joined us since COVID came. Her and her husband, they do not want any chance of getting COVID and they have not joined us for holidays. And it's been, well, I guess like two years now. Yeah, two years. And so uh, it affected our relationship mm. with them. We'll still talk to them on the phone, but we just not have seen them in person like we would all the time. Yes, ma'am. I know during the beginning of the pandemic, there were situations where most families weren't getting around with the older generations, with grandparents, great-grandparents, and the sense of being afraid 
of where they were going to contact it. Was that the same for your family? Did y'all take certain precautions? Did did y'all do it differently? How did that come about? When it talks to, when you mean about a family, like when it comes to the grandparents, family, grandparents, uh, I don't think so. It seemed to be normal. I think just like for, Uh, one second. Yes, ma'am. Oh, here. You know. You got the answer to the last one? Uh, we're still continuing on with how uh, everything was situated with grandparents. Because I know personally for my family, for a good while, we did put precautions in because my grandfather does work with my dad so we were trying to still keep him safe but where he was still working and it would be like times where we wouldn't be able to see them uh if we went out for a certain time like if we went to san antonio for a weekend we would stay a couple days to ourselves were there precautions that you took or did you just continue okay well learn? when it comes to my son and nieces and nephew with their grandparents I would say there was like no change. Everything was normal. I think just like their love for each other, it was just like over everything. So there wasn't really much of a difference. But when it comes to me and my grandma, which she recently passed away, but at that time she was alive, she was in a nursing home. And we could not see her in person for a long time. And when we could see her, it would have to be through a window. So uh, she was elderly, she was very old in her mid 80s. And I mean, when it comes to them, we want to be more careful and the nursing home took uh, that control. And so, um, yes, we would love to touch her, hug her, kiss her, but we know that they're more fragile, you know, at that age. And we were, you know, um, in agreement with the roles and stood by the roles and went to go visit her still, but just not able to touch her. Did that affect both you, your kids, your nieces, your nephews, did that sort of mess with them in any sort of way, not being able to see a family member or be able to touch them even through just seeing them? I think when it comes to the little ones, my little nieces, they're about, one was like three, the other one was about six. I would say it affected them the most because they're still trying to figure out like what is going on like what's so serious that I can't hug my great grandma when it comes to the older ones my son and my older niece and nephew they're more like not so scared because with the parents not feeling so scared they see that and so they're not so scared about it Yes, ma'am. So you started talking about how even through the pandemic, you did take precautions, but you still saw your family. Is that still happening to this day, even though COVID isn't as rampant or as seriously rampant as it was where we were hearing about cases being in a thousand every day? Does it still, is it still a little bit more normal now with your family? Mm -hmm. seeing them? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been like that for a while. So who do you still interact with? Uh, my siblings, my parents, my son, um, my, uh, we may interact, you mean like in person? Yes, ma'am. Um, with my son's dad and family, my boyfriend, my boyfriend's family. Um, at school, my coworkers, my students, and church members. Yes, ma'am. So you being also a teacher, was there any sort of difference with how you were at home when being with your children and then going to school and having it be different with your students? Because I know when we were in school, we had to wear masks, we had to do certain situations where we were cleaning everything. When your kids came home, were there anything that you had to do? I know certain parents would 
wipe off what their kids were wearing or have them change just in case anything happened? Um, I didn't have my son um, change clothes or anything like that. Um, I did tell him to wash his hands more often, but that would probably be the one thing that I uh, would tell him to do that was different. Um, I would think another thing would be when he was sick, I, we both wore a mask or I wore a mask. He really couldn't have been sick with the breathing, but I wore the mask and um, that was the first time that happened. So I did that also at home. Yes, ma'am. How did you feel about masks in general when everything was happening? Because I know some people had different opinions because I know some people didn't really want to wear them. They weren't comfortable with wearing them. Some people thought that it was a necessity. Did you see that differently? Because I know with school for a second, it was mandatory. Um, well, <clears throat> I agreed with it. It was okay because I know germs spread through the mouth and it's in the air and it floats around and someone can breathe it in or like it can just spread like that. So actually before COVID came, my pastor's wife had cancer and I was sick with a sore throat and because she had cancer, she was going to church still. We all knew that we could not get her sick with her immune system being so weak. So I actually wore a mask to church and it seemed so strange and weird. And, uh, and everyone looking at me, I was the only one with the mask. And I, I was up playing keyboard. I just didn't want to get her sick because I knew that the germs can come out, float. She would breathe it in or, you know, somehow catch it, you know, around me or, you know, greeting. Yes, well, at that thing, we'll greet still. So I do believe that it helps keep germs to ourselves and then breathe in from somebody else. Um, but I don't like wearing it because you can't breathe as good, but I, I, it helps. I know it helps. Has your opinion changed? Because I know now uh, at the school, it's not really mandatory. If you want to wear one, you can wear one. If you don't, you don't have to. Do you still wear one just for the sake of the kids? Do you take it off at certain moments? Do you have them wear masks? Uh, so we can't tell them to wear a mask. When it comes to my personal decision, I actually, day one of going back to school this year, it, they told us it was optional. However, if we were not vaccinated and we got sick with COVID, they would not cover our days. But if we were vaccinated, our days would be um, covered. You know what I mean? Like paid, in other words, like we would get paid. So when I heard that, I decided that I did not want to get sick at all. So it wasn't that I didn't want to get COVID. I was scared of it. I just didn't want to get sick at all because every winter I do get sick and I do stay home and I take my days off and we're covered up to 10 days. So after that, it comes out of our pocket. Like we have to pay for it the other days. And I didn't want that to happen to me. So with, um, not being vaccinated, I decided to wear my mask. I wore it from the first day of school all the way till I stopped last month or a month ago is when I stopped because things are calming down and getting towards the end. Kids are not really sick. Not going, uh, the nurse is not sending any kids home now. And so I just, I take it off now, but I wore it the whole school year. I just didn't want to get sick and have to pay out of my pocket the days that I'm gone. Yes, ma'am. Since you are a teacher during the COVID pandemic, especially from going from online to in person, did that affect you in any way? Uh, yeah, I would say so in a negative way because the kids, when they came back, their behavior, attitude, point of view of education, and the world was different, and it's harder to teach. It's been harder to teach them with that mindset and that uh, behavior. Um, so it just it just feels like my job is harder, and it just affected me in that way. There's not as much enthusiasm or motivation 
Yeah, like they're used to before COVID. Yes, ma'am. I know there was a situation where there was a set day where we could still come back to school, but some kids had still decided to be online. I know personally, my family had made that decision where even though we had cousins who had decided to go back to school, we still had the option of staying home. Was that a little bit of a struggle? Uh, yep. We had to teach the students at school like normal, yet set up lessons for the kids that were at home. And so it was like to being a teacher and have in two different areas, but at the same time. Um, however, they did take the load off and they would let us use a program that had videos in it already, but we had to keep an eye on them to call parents if they weren't doing it, help them if they need help, like have online tutoring. So we had those duties with them. Yes, ma'am. What about your children in particular? Did they go back to school when the school decided to have school again or did they stay online as well? You mean my son? Yes, ma'am. Or my students, my son? Yes. Uh, we decided that my son would go back to school in person. Did that affect him in any way of having to be home for a good amount of time and not being really able to see his friends? He was excited to see his friends, but getting up, right, going to the routine of getting up and being at school like by 7.45 and just going back to working, mm -hmm. that was uh, hard for him to get back on his feet again because online schooling was more relaxing, quick assignments, a few hours, you know, he was done in the day. And so as a teacher point of view, I see that with my students. They, it was all just easy going, less work, not pushing, having a lot of fun too, or not even a lot of fun, but just more freedom, I guess, but less work. And so now when they're back, it's just more work and I see the effects of that. Yes, ma'am. Were there any resources that he needed for school that weren't accessible during the time? Because I know certain situations, there were families that didn't have enough computers for their kids, or like my brother, he had speech problems. So he kind of was having to do it on his own at home now. And the school did provide a little, uh, he, they provided him a tool and where it could help him with his speech, but he still wasn't being taught sort of in person. So it did affect him a bit. Was there anything like that that affected your son? He was provided with a device. Um, he didn't have any textbooks I would have liked for him to have, but at the same time, I did ask the school for them. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. But no, I remember him being provided with a, a de no, no, no. Actually, he was not provided with the device. I had one. And so he used my device I had at home, but the school let us know that if they needed one, um, they can lend one out. But it was just my son and I know with other families that are his cousins, where there's four in the family, they had to share devices because school didn't have enough. So families would have to share and that was very hard hard on the kids to share. Do you think that also affected other students in the sense of not really having textbooks or the tools they needed that they usually got from school at their disposable at home? Yep. Mm -hmm. have, have, you have, pers have you heard of like any incidents where a student has told you that they did have trouble or there was any situation where they kind of tried to get more help because it wasn't really able to when they were online? Mm, but they try to get more help yes, than they were doing online. Uh, I know for my son, him getting the more help was from me. I know I had to be there along with him learning and trying to help him with his assignments. Uh, as for my students, 
I know sometimes they would reach out to me. I know that they would help each other. Um, I didn't receive any requests for textbooks either. Yes, ma'am. But what about the school helping out the community when COVID happened? I know personally the school did uh, provide lunches or breakfast for families. Do they still have that ongoing? Is that still an option? Um, I know it was at the beginning of the school year. They stopped in the middle of the school year. People weren't coming in anymore is what it looked like to me. Yes, ma'am. So they just stopped doing it. Has your own education been disrupted as a result of COVID-19? Were there challenges that you still face today? My own education? Um, no, I would say for me personally, it's been enhanced because of being home. I looked into educating myself in growing food. And so I like really have been studying I've taken classes with that time I had at home. And so mine actually was enhanced with this. I just took advantage of the time at home. Now we're gonna move on to the sort of vaccination aspect of it. Of course, if there's any questions you don't wanna answer about vaccination, you can always say pass. So did you personally get yourself vaccinated? No. No? your sign other family members that they get vaccinated as well mm -mm. no ma'am nope have you been hesitant about getting it in general or is it just solely your own beliefs of not wanting to get it because i know most people were very hesitant because some people believed it was rushed some people still didn't trust uh, because there were side effects with one of the vaccinations where the Johnson & Johnson vaccine wasn't really as up-to-date as the Moderna. Um, I wouldn't say there wasn't a hesitation. It's just I, my beliefs about it. It was just, I wasn't going to get it. We're not going to get it still. Yes, ma'am. So besides the vaccination, we've also been sort of pushed more into healthcare and how that's affected a lot of people because I know a lot of people aren't really have the accessibility for healthcare, especially older generations besides the younger generations because with younger generations and older generations, there's Medicare, there's Medicaid. Were there any concerns personally for you about healthcare that emerged during COVID? Personally, Um, not really. No, I wouldn't say no, not really. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's changing the way you're doing or getting health care now? Because mm -mm. I know certain families, even though they were getting sick, some were still very hesitant about going to the hospital in the sense of re getting COVID again. So they would kind of do their own remedies at home. I know some people were just scared of going to the hospital in general because they're so compact and full of patients. Did that mm -hmm. concern you? Mm -hmm. Or like when people got sick, did you, like when your son got sick, did you still take him to the doctors? Oh, uh, yes. I still took him to his doctor and um, they took precautions of all sorts in there and gave him um, some medicine and went home and he recovered. Uh, but that's really the only experience we had is when he got sick. Yes, ma'am. Besides the physical aspect of the disease, was there an, any mental health impacts or challenges that you faced, not just with being a teacher, but also being a parent or just you in general, did it have any mental impact on you? As a parent, no. As a teacher, yes. Because, like I was saying earlier, with the kids' attitude and how they, what happened and how laid back they got, is what it, 
what it seems like is they just don't want to work as hard, learn like they used to. And it's just hard to work with students like that. And it's hard to keep the, the motivation to keep teaching and to, the enthusiasm, you know, to have it there. It's just more, it's just kind of frustrating, you know, as a teacher now. So it affects me. It affects me mentally as a teacher. Did it also affect you in the sense of your son going to school? Were you ever worried that he was going to come back and end up contracting the virus or anything? Yes, um, to a minor extent, yes, I was. I would have him wear a mask and tell him to wash his hands and just to be careful. Um, but uh, just to a minor extent, I was worried. What about yourself? Because you were in you were in a school where you have children going to and from your classroom, especially working in high school. You have more than a couple of students at a time and more than one grade. Were there any situations where you were scared you were going to get it and maybe have to isolate from your son or giving it to your son? I wasn't scared. I mean, I haven't been scared of COVID at all, but. I know that sicknesses, like they transfer from one to another. Like I know, you know, that happens. And so I was just um, taking precautions not to get sick in any way, not just COVID, like even like the cold or the flu or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say that I was scared, but I didn't want to get sick, you know, in, in any way. So I would just, just be careful. Yes, ma'am. You talked about earlier about if you had the vaccine and you did contract or you were almost contracting the virus, you had a paid leave or you had a situation worked out. And if you weren't vaccinated, it was situated differently. Did that affect you in any way? Yeah, it was kind of sad. I felt like I was being punished for not being vaccinated. Or I was going to be punished if I got COVID because I wasn't vaccinated. That's how I felt. Like, it was a punishment. Yes, ma'am. So does that situation still stand to even now where the vaccinations and not vaccinated are sort of treated differently throughout everything? I believe so because I haven't heard otherwise. I think that we will hear if it changed would be the next school year when we start in August. Yes, ma'am. Do you still believe that even outside the school, being vaccinated and unvaccinated is treated differently from a part? Because I know when you're unvaccinated, you're getting it more pushed on you. And there is situations where they're saying if you're not vaccinated, you can't do certain things. I see the signs of that if you're not va vaccinated, or you should wear a mask, or uh, the opposite of that is. Uh... If you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. But there's no, like, we don't have to, like, show any proof that we're vaccinated or not. So it kind of, it affects me at first, you know, seeing that. But, you know, as if it's kind of like, again, like a punishment. But since there's not any proof for us, it just seems like we're just all still, like, blended together. Yes, ma'am. Were there other scenarios besides your work part of it where if you weren't vaccinated, you were sort of treated differently? Did you have any situation with that? At work? Well, besides work. Or besides work? Mm. No. Mm -mm. Have any of the organizations you're a part of provide resources regarding COVID? Because I know you stated that during the first aspect of it, church went online. Were there other things they were doing to sort of give a sense of normalcy while being sort of closed off during the pandemic? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Can, can you explain your question? The organizations you're a part of, such as church, you had stated before that they went online for a good while and Sunday school had closed off for a good portion. Is Sunday school still going on? Oh, um, yes, it, it, now it is. 
So is there other resources that they provided during the pandemic besides just online um, sermons? Um, when it comes to the church, no. I'm trying to think of other organizations that I was in, but I would say no. Mm -hmm. How about school board? They provided us with a small amount of money during COVID. When COVID came, they gave us um, a small amount of money to help with internet at home. I remember that. I know we discussed that there were going to be certain questions that you didn't want to talk about. And I know politics are sort of brought up. Did you want to pass on that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Then we're going to go, we've, I know we've talked about your work, but there's still some more details I would like to get over, especially how it impacted you. Was there a time where you were scared you were going to sort of lose work due to the pandemic? No, because I knew I've done online tutoring. So I knew that there was going to be online. Like I, I knew I wasn't going to lose my job. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever receive a pay cut due to the pandemic and how everything was going along? No. What about, because I know there was teachers who did not want to go back to school even though school was progressing and teachers needed to be there when there were students who decided to do face-to-face uh, -face learning, was there any hesitation for even a slight bit of maybe staying home or as soon as you were able to get back into the class, were you on board? Yeah, I was on board. Were there any of your colleagues who were, who kind of were hesitant about how everything is going along or concerned? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has your work changed in any way from before the pandemic, during the pandemic to now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you give a little bit of insight? Um, the main thing, I, it was uh, what I said before about cleaning. Yes, ma'am. We have to do a lot of um, cleaning. And when a student gets sent to the nurse with at least two COVID symptoms. We have to leave our room that the student was in. All the rooms that the student was in, we have to leave as they spray the whole room to get rid of all the germs. Yes, ma'am. So like that's another thing added to the list that's different now. I know also when we were in school, we had those sort of little uh, folders that we would put around ourselves. To sort oh, of the spiders? Yes, ma'am. Did that affect you in any way? Did you find it just convenient or not? <laughs> I remember I didn't find it convenient, especially when they could just wear their mask. And then I remember one student having to sneeze and he took off his mask and like faced away from the shield and sneezed like right by his neighbor and I had to like talk to them about like what the reason the reasons of these things in front of them are you know I like, keep the mask on you, you stay in your shield but the kids would also like to play with them a little bit and then after a while they got so scratched that the students could not breathe the board very well through them so and then they will fall off the desk and everyone will look and it was just a distraction it seemed to be a distraction more than helping spread germs when it just to me the mask was just good enough yes ma'am i know certain teachers had us more spread out in the classrooms but we also had classrooms that weren't very big they were very small so did that sort of caused problems with both trying to put precautions but also space wise 
Yes. I know for me, my principal told me to space out my desk and I did so because my class was not that big. And I had maybe like 20 students at the most. And even when he came in and saw, he wanted me to spread them, uh, spread them out more, which is about, I would say from desk to desk, but one in front of the other, maybe like, I got to maybe like four to five inches. And then two, when the kids are the back row being so far back there, it was hard for them to see the board too. So it was, yeah, it was tough. Yes, ma'am. Do you, did it affect you in any way? I know for the juniors and seniors, we more had sort of a downfall with it because we had prom. I know the seniors didn't have their prom and it was very hard to even do graduation. We were very limited to how many people we could bring. And I know there's many kids or many of my peers who had more family who were coming out of state and we were sometimes only limited four tickets per person. And I know it mentally affected them with not having certain people there. Is that still going on now for graduation this year? Hmm. Um, not that I know of. There, had, there hasn't been any tickets passed out. Not that I know of. I don't think that's happening anymore. I know y'all have also recently just had your prom. Was that different in any way this year than how it was the previous years? Well, I haven't attended prom the previous years. This was my first year ever attending prom. So I can't compare. However, there was still the sitting down wherever they want, normal seating. There's no like six feet apart with the chairs. Uh, still there's music and dancing. Um, it was the only thing different is that they could wear a mask if they want to. Yes, ma'am. And most of them did not. So it seemed pretty normal. Yes, ma'am. What about the graduation aspect of it? I know you being a teacher, you were able to attend graduation, but it was very hard when we didn't have as much people crowded around trying to see everyone graduating. Did that affect you not being able to know, seeing that some kids didn't really have everybody they wanted there? Yeah. It was pretty sad. Uh, I went to be supportive of them when I was just like two or three out of the high school staff that went. I sat in a big group of chairs that was about 90, 95% empty. Yes, ma'am. You were also part of the UIL team that were there, but you also went and supported many of the students throughout other activities. Was there any confliction with that? I know with UIL, I don't know if it still went on, if there was limitations to it. In 2020, those kids, they weren't able to compete because I remember the heartbreak because for the first time with that class 2020, I had worked with some their freshman year to get them ready for their senior year. And I can remember the heartbreak that they weren't able to compete after working four years. The next year they were able to compete. I remember um, there were precautions taken. Uh, I know for practices, since COVID, there have been virtual meets. So we don't go to schools anymore to practice, like invitational meets, we don't have those anymore in person. We just, we did the virtual ones. Yes, ma'am. Were there any other events that were sort of treated differently throughout the pandemic? I know homecoming was different. I know there's limitations to football games. I'm not sure about basketball or volleyball games. For basketball, this in volleyball, the superintendent wanted them to wear masks. Remember basketball, for sure, because they had to, my heart went out to them because they had to run the court back and forth with a mask on. And they would express to me how tough that was to breathe. And so they would pull down the mask uh, to breathe better. 
and no one would get after them so they would keep it like that this someone would eventually put it under their chin and no one got after them so then they would they started doing that and with masks not being as pushed onto the kids this year were they were their masks not used during sports yes um, i don't remember seeing a student in a sport this year that weren't masked Moving on from the education aspect of it, I know during the pandemic, there was many social movements. You had Black Lives Matter, you had Stop Asian Hate. Even now you still have more movements. Did you see that any differently during the pandemic? Because huh? I know some people saw it more hypocritical that we're pushing masks and vaccines onto so many people, but we had large crowds of people throughout mm. everywhere. Did you kind of agree with that more about it being different, about sort of having not really an excuse, but more of a bit of freedom when it came to that? Um. Uh, can you repeat that one more time? That question, repeat that question. Yes, ma'am. So that we had Black Lives Matter and other organizations and social movements throughout the pandemic. And even though people were forcing, well, not really forcing, but pushing on wearing masks and having vaccines and then seeing on TV all these people, these protesters not wearing masks or barely some wearing masks while being in very large crowds. Did you sort of see that as a bit different or sort of a bit of freedom they had even though everybody else was getting it pushed onto them? I was gonna pass on that one. Yes, ma'am. Have you participated in anything that's different uh, both during COVID or even now that's sort of different than how you did everything? Like, have you been part of things where you have to wear a mask even though you're sort of laid back on that? The only thing is the doctor's office. So doctors, so the doctor offices that you still attend, you, stu you still do have to wear a mask? Yes. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't, that you would like to put out there and we can discuss? No, I think that's it. Well, I have had a pleasure of talking with you again and I appreciate you helping me out with this project, especially giving more of an insight, especially since you are a teacher and I was just a student in your class who most of the time was dozing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Thank you for uh talking to me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It was it was nice hearing from you again and, and uh I'm thankful that I can help you out with this. I hope I helped you out. You remember or I don't know if it's because of the class or whatever, but you brought up things that I totally forgot about. <laughs> like oh yeah oh yeah well it was, so, uh, it's mostly because you know I I was online for a majority of my senior year I didn't come back to class until maybe about March so I was sort of one of the kids who were still dealing with uh, their family sort of uh, saying well you can't go back to school and my parents were like we're going to keep you home so it was sort of more seeing everything Cause yeah, because even now my brothers are still homeschooled, even though the pandemic is still sort of lying down. And I know even during the sort of days where we were allowed to go back or they're saying like online learning was going to go for it was going to stop. I know they had sort of an option of being homeschooled. Mm -hmm. I know some kids took that option. Yeah. But again, thank you for helping me out. I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. You're very welcome.